Now this is interesting because if you look between the two devices, the, the lamp isn't plugged in to the socket. Now if I come up to here and turn it on, there you go, the lamp turns on. So how clever is that? You can have a rule set up to control another device from the switch. Hi there, today we're unboxing a smart Wi-Fi double socket with USB. So this particular one is by NRJ. Details are in the description below for anyone thinking of purchasing. So let's take a quick look around the packaging. It comes nicely packaged with a picture of the actual double socket. Some details here, only compatible with 2.4G Wi-Fi. No hub required. Device sharing is possible. There's a timer function. You can schedule activities and voice control is possible with the Amazon Alexa and Google Assistant. Also works with IFTTT. Coming around here, some more details, which I've just already said. Some details here at the back. So amp rated 13 amps plus 2.1 amp USB. Power voltage supply at 240 volts. Model details there. Network technology, obviously Wi-Fi I've mentioned. Number of earth terminals, two. Number of poles, SP. Number of gangs, two gang. Parent color, white. Product type, smart socket, smart capability, smart. Switched, unswitched, so it's switched. Switches and sockets finish is matte. Switches and sockets profile is raised square. Switch position, inboard. Terminal capacity, terminals accessible. 2.5 mil or 4 mil cables. Coming around here, you've got some details of the app required to install. So it's their own NRJ Smart app. Coming around here, UK plug and highlighting branding there, and that's it. So let's open it up and see what you get in the packaging. Okay, so I've laid out all the items you get in the packaging, so let me quickly go through them one by one. Initially, you've got some screws for installing the double socket. Then you've got a setup guide, all in English, two sides to this as shown. With this one, you can use the NRJ app as they've highlighted here, but it also works with Smart Life and Tuya as well, just to note. Now the actual double socket itself, interesting finish to this, a nice matte finish on there. And if I can come in close, you may be able to see slight grain in there. So it does look pretty cool. Flush finish and two buttons on there and even they don't stick out too much as you can see. Good feel to the buttons and obviously you've got the USB point there which is 5 volts 2.1 amps. Coming around the side profile is pretty slim on there. Bring my ruler in it's around two centimeters. Coming around the back you can see the two earth terminals and they're neutral and live on there. Some details at the back there. So it's saying obviously 220 volts to 240 volts, 50 to 60 hertz. Maximum load is 13 amps. USB output 5 volts, 2.1 amp. Standby power less than one watt. And it's highlighting the fact that it only works on 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. So the socket itself is sitting on a metal plate. So you can see it's just attached and it's just clipped onto there. So there must be other plates in different colors available in this. But so far from what I've seen, the build quality of this does feel good. Next, let's remove the plate at the front just to show what's underneath it. So if I get my screwdriver and it can just pop off. And there you go. That's what that reveals. Just to give you a closer look and obviously metal finish on this and the rest of it is all plastic. Let's make a start at installing this Wi-Fi socket. So I'm at an existing socket. I've isolated the power here. I've checked just to confirm it is all off. And now I'm going to remove the socket. Now the screws are out. Pull the wires out just to show. So live earth and neutral are there so i just need to unscrew these and put them in the relevant terminals on the socket here so you've got the earth terminals here neutral and live there now wiring is complete as you can see live neutral and earth there all securely in place just make sure they're nice and tight and now we can screw the socket back on the wall
There you go, the socket is installed now and we can just push the plate on. And there you go, firmly in place now. Now I've turned on the power just to show, if I press there, light comes on to indicate the socket has power. Another light there. Now just to prove the point, I've got a light over here at the side. Push that in, you can see light come on. There you go. Buttons feel nice as well, so so far so good. Let's make a start at setting up this smart Wi-Fi socket. So I'm at my Android phone, let me click on the Play Store and we want to search for NRJ Smart and it's that app there and let me click install and let's give it a moment to install. Now the app's installed, let's click open. Next we need to register an account, so let me register an account off camera. I've created an account so let's log in now and this is what you're initially presented with. So to set up this smart socket if I click plus we click socket Wi-Fi and now we need to get this socket blinking to accept a configuration. So to do this you just hold on to two buttons here for about five to ten seconds. So let's give it a moment. There you go, it's flashing away now rapidly. Next let me click confirm indicator rapidly blink and this is what I'm presented with and this is where I have to enter in my Wi-Fi password and just to note it highlights only 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi is supported. So let me enter in my Wi-Fi password off camera. Next let me click confirm and there you go it's added in so successfully added very straightforward click done and that's the interface for the socket. So if I go back a moment just to show that's what's initially provided, clicking on there. Now clicking the top button turns both the switches on as you can see over here. If I press it again, it turns it off. So both the lights have gone off. Now if I press the socket there, you can see that one's gone on. Press that one, the next one goes on. Now you can rename the switches as you can see here. And then coming up the top here, you've got modify name, so you can modify the name of the device, device location, check the network, and supported third party controls. Coming down further, you can see share device, create group, device info, you'll have things like IP address, MAC address details for the device, help and feedback, check for firmware update, remove device, and right at the bottom, you've got restore manufacturer defaults. Coming back from there, if I now click on schedule, so this is where you can set up a schedule for each of the switches to turn on and turn off devices. So if I click on the first one, schedule's empty, if I click there, you can pick a time. So at the moment it's 19.30, so if I go 31, only, a, only once and on, let's click save, go back, let me quickly turn it off. Let's give it a moment, so in theory it should just turn on. And it's a one-off event, so once you've set it and it's gone off, that's it. Unless, let me go in there anyway, it's already set up. Uh, I can change that to any other days of the week. So you can have a regular schedule. So for example, you could have a setting where after a certain time, if your TV's plugged into it, it turns off and it's not on standby at all. So let's give it a moment and see if it turns on. There you go. It's turned on and it did highlight just here that it was going to turn on after 1931. So excellent functionality there. So as you see the two plug sockets work really well remotely. You can turn them on and off and also you can set timers on there. The only real disappointment I found I thought the USB might be controllable but it's not. So if it was it would be quite useful because you could have a device charging off there and set a timer for it to shut down. But not the end of the world, you can have another plug plugged into that and you can set that on timer. If I now drop this down, turn off my Wi-Fi, get the device connecting on 4G, there you go, it's connected now. And if I go into the socket, turn it off, turn it on, there you go. So it works straight out of the box, no ports open on your router and hassle-free, just works straight away remotely. So you can be traveling somewhere, anywhere, and as long as you have internet access, you can remotely turn on plugs or turn off plugs. So for example, you could have a lamp plugged into it and the lamp could be coming on at certain times trying to give the indication that there's someone home. 
So excellent bit of functionality there and very simple to set up as you see. Next, let me show the fact that this Wi-Fi socket can work with Smart Life and Tuya. So I've got the Smart Life app here. If I click on there, interface wise, very similar to the NJ Smart app. If I click on the plus there, socket Wi-Fi, if we click there, confirm indicator rapidly blink and it is blinking as you can see. If I click there now and it's already got my Wi-Fi password cached as I've previously used this. So if I just click confirm, there you go. Added straight away and if I click done, functionality is exactly the same as using it with the NJ Smart app. And again, I can remotely turn on plugs, set schedules as well. If I come here, all the info here is exactly the same as well. And if I turn off my Wi-Fi, let it connect to 4G, go into it, and I can turn it on again. So exactly the same as the NJ Smart app, but it's great that it also works with other apps like Smart Life and Tuya as well. Next, let me show how to set up this device to work with both the Google Home and the Amazon Alexa. So I've got my devices set up just over here. First, before we do anything, let's go into Smart Life, go to there and actually just rename the socket. So we'll just call it Bedroom Socket. So more of a distinctive name. So if I come out now, let's make a start at setting this up on the Google Home. So if I click on Home and we click over here, go to Assistant Settings, Assistant, Home Control, click on the plus and we want to add a service in. So the one we're after is Smart Life. So if you haven't already got it, add it in. Once you add it in, it'll ask you for your credentials. Once you've confirmed them, then it will try to link in with the service. Now, if I come back and from this screen, if I scroll down, I should be able to see bedroom sockets. And there you go. It's that one there. So if I now click on, there you go. You can see the light come on and they're both turned on. If I click off, they both turn off. If I go in there, on and off, if I click there, you can see the name, you can rename it if you wanted to, or you can unlink it. Now, it's actually turning on both the switches. As you can see, the, both the lights are coming on. Now, if I go back and scroll down, you'll see two additional switches here. So if I click on this one, click off, click on this one, off. So let's rename these. So it's not clearly shown on there. So we can call this one switch one and this one we'll call switch two. There you go. So if we come out now, you can see that with more distinctive names on there. So let's try turning it on. There you go, turns on now. And same with each one, you just see a single switch. So there's three options available. First is a combined turn on and turn off of both the switches. And then you've got individual controls as well. So now if I unmute my Google the microphone home, is back on. I can say turn off bedroom sockets. Sure, turning off the bedroom sockets. Turn on bedroom sockets. Okay, turning the bedroom sockets on. Turn off switch one. Okay, turning the switch one off. Turn on switch one. Okay, turning the switch one on. Turn off switch two. Okay, turning off the switch two. Turn on switch two. Okay, turning on the switch two. There you go, as simple as that to get configured and it's nice, you've got three levels of functionality. First of all, you can turn the whole switch on and off and then you can work on each of the individual plugs. So excellent functionality there. Next, let me show how to get this socket working with the Amazon Alexa. So I've got the Alexa app here, if I click on that, click here in the corner, go to skills and games, we want to search for smart life that's the skill and if you don't have it enabled enable it it'll ask you for your credentials you enter them in and once you confirm it will link in with the alexa so now if i go to devices scroll along go to all devices and we want to look for 
bedroom sockets. There we have it, bedroom sockets. If we click on that, now if we click it, turns it off, click it again, turns it on. So both does it at the same time, just like on the Google Home. And if we click here in settings, we can rename it if we wanted to. Now, if we come out, scroll further down, looking over here at the bottom, you can see the Chinese writing and that's the individual sockets. So if I now click on one of them, now switch two before, so let's rename it to switch two. And if we go to the other one, and that'll switch one. So let's rename it to that. And now if I unmute my Alexa, I can say, turn off bedroom sockets. Okay. Turn on bedroom sockets. Okay. There you go. And now if I say, turn off switch one. Okay. Turn on switch one. Okay. Turn off switch two. Okay. Turn on switch two. Okay. So there you go, excellent functionality. You can individually control the sockets or you can turn them both on and off at the same time. So great functionality from both the Google Home and the Amazon Alexa. Next thing I wanted to demonstrate is smart scenes. So if I click on smart here, click on the plus, and this is where you can set up your custom automation. So now I can say, if we look at the bottom option, when the device status changes, click on that, click on the switch, and we can say if switch one is turned on, what we want to do is initiate another device. So clicking on there, we can say vintage lamp, which is my lamp that's just here. I can say I want that to turn on. And then next, if I click save, say we start using it. And one more rule I want to set up. So if I say the switch is turned off next, we want to do on the lamp, we want to turn it off. Now this is interesting because if you look between the two devices, the, the lamp isn't plugged in to the socket. Now if I come up to here and turn it on, there you go, the lamp turns on. So how clever is that? You can have a rule set up to control another device from the switch. So that's quite clever. And if I now go back, go to the device itself, there you go, I can switch it on remotely and I'll switch on a secondary device. So you're not restricted in any way with this, you can set up as multiple different smart scenes, smart automation as much as you want, but the thing to note is it'll only work if you have Wi-Fi. So that's the one thing that links all this together, Wi-Fi itself. If your Wi-Fi goes down, none of these smart scenes will work and you won't be able to control this remotely. And also if you did have timers, even the timers won't work. So the theory here, it does work really well, but again, remember it relies on the Wi-Fi constantly being Okay, active. so you've seen the unboxing and setup of this Wi-Fi smart switch, very simple to set up and configure, works on the NRJ smart app, but also works with Tuya and Smart Life as well. So I quite like the fact it works with that. Individual switches can be controlled remotely. You've got switches here as override. You can set timers on this. But the only thing I didn't like was the fact that the USB couldn't be remotely controlled on this. So there you go. Hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this. Details are in the description below. Thanks for viewing and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe.